Horror games nowadays rarely spook people out. Most horror games played nowadays follow the same type of genre of loud noises and unexpected jump scares. But every once in a while, there are some games that give off an unnerving experience. Almost as if the game mentioned in today's video shouldn't even exist. But before we do dive into the today's topic, I do want to let you guys know if you guys do enjoy these types of videos, consider subscribing because it's literally all we talk about on this channel. And uh, yeah, I'm still working on that iceberg that I said I was working on a couple of videos ago. It's taking a long time to film and edit, but I'm pr I promise it should be out in a couple of days. Who knows, just depends how it goes. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention to you guys. My name is Achilles and I hope you guys enjoy his video. So how did this all begin? This all began when a silent let's player on YouTube going by the name Obscure Horror Corner was provided with a deep web link from one of his subscribers. At the time, OHC was taking in game recommendations from his subscribers when one anonymous subscriber linked OHC a download to a game. The subscriber claims to have found the Onion link in a deep web forum. With people not knowing, an onion link is basically a link that leads down to the deepest parts of the internet and can only be accessed by a Tor browser or something remotely similar. So OHC launched up a Tor hidden service and followed the link that led him to downloading an EXE file, which led to a game being opened known as Sad Satan. So on June 25th, 2015, Obscure Horror Corner would upload their first playthrough of Sad Satan. Along with this playthrough, he would provide an onion URL to the game's download in the description. With many people wanting to download the game, upon opening the link in the description, it simply stated that the link was no longer accessible. So all the people can do now is simply watch the video and observe. The entire gameplay was narrationless and OHC just let the gameplay play out. The game begins with the player walking down a long hallway as your footsteps and other noises can be heard in the background, following up with various audio samples of distorted and reverse recordings. Many to be of such interviews or musical clips. Reverse clips from a Swedish Rab City number station can also be heard in the background. Eventually, the player continues on down a black and white hallway. Reaching the end of a hallway, the player is greeted with a picture of a man standing on top of a staircase surrounded with deer antlers. Seconds later, the player is kicked out back onto the hallways. After much more walking, the screen flashes a photo of Jimmy Salvio and Margaret celebrating their badge of the NSPCC, which stands for National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. The funny thing is, that one on the left, Jimmy Saville, is actually a serious sexual predator. And the fact that he works at NSPCC makes it even more bizarre. On June 28th, 2015, OHC would upload a follow-up part 2 of the Sad Satan playthrough. But much like the first playthrough, it's essentially just a player walking through endless, disordered hallways. Well about a minute into the gameplay, a picture of JFK's assassination is shown on the screen, following up with a picture of a behemoth. A Baphomet is a deity that was worshipped by the temple lawyers and other western traditions and is now associated with Satanism and occultism. Throughout the two parts, there are plenty of sexual predators flashed across the screen and blood curling streams in the background. After the second Let's Play, many media outlets and journalists would publish articles about Sad Satan. On July 1st, 2015, Kotaku would make an article talking about the game and Obscure Horror Corner, who goes by the name Jamie, would be interviewed. Jamie claims the game came with a file that creeped him out so much that he had to delete all the files of the game. Jamie also continues to state, it was getting a bit strange. A notepad file that went along with the game kept appearing on my desktop each time I played the game, with some gibberish messages. Unfortunately, Jamie said he had no screenshots at the time, but said it didn't seem to be in any specific language, just symbols and numbers. Kotaku even reached out to the so-called subscriber that sent Jamie the link, and he had this to say. I first found about the game on a deep web forum. The user never specified whether it was his own content or someone else's, but I presume it was the user's game. He said he also signed off his forum post with the initials ZK. 
Now remember these initials, we will be hearing more of him in the future. The subscriber claims that he's recognized the initials before and claims that ZK was a pretty active member on the forums and he would mostly comment some weird and dark satanic views. The subscriber then continues to say that the only reason he requested this game to Jamie is because he couldn't get it to run on his own computer. This Kotaku article was the spark that led many internet detectives to become interested. After this, a huge thread on Reddit was created. Many people were skeptical about all of this, so they started to micro-analyze every single detail in the videos. Later that day, Jamie would reply to a comment left on his post that said, I would have kept going, but I stopped at one minute. Don't trust pictures from the deep web. Jamie would reply with, there's no corpses or CP, if that's what you mean. On July 1st, 2015, the same day that Kotaku published their article about Sad Satan, OHC would upload the third part for the Let's Play. The third playthrough continues almost the same as the other parts in the series, with some disordered and reversed audio recordings and flashing imagery, but this time their photos of white canvases with codes on them playing in the background is a song called I Love Beijing Tina Man which is referencing the game Hong Kong 97 on the Super Nintendo. This game was made in the 90s and what it's famous for is whenever you reach the game over screen it shows a dead body on the screen. On July 4th part 4 of the playthrough was uploaded. This playthrough follows the same type of style that the other playthroughs go through. It continues to flash countless photos of child predators almost as if this part specifically was made for the theme of child abuse. People continue to speculate and some users were able to find out how the game was actually made. The game was made using the Unity Terror Engine. A terror engine is a game creation system that allows users to create horror games with advanced mechanics without any required coding. Of course, more and more people continue to speculate because some of the puzzles and pieces were just not adding up. Jamie mentioned many times that he discovered the link on the deep web forum himself, but on the interview with Kotaku, he mentioned that he received the link from a subscriber. Also, the playthrough from OHC didn't seem quite right either. For starters, it seems that some of the clips have been spliced even though this should have just been one whole big segment of him experiencing the game for the first time. So why is he cutting clips in and out? In the start of part 4, we see a picture on the first frame that just doesn't seem realistic. How would it line up like that? Even the owner of the huge reddit thread was throwing some shadows of doubt towards OHC. The owner realized that the topic of sad satan was starting to get quite a bit of attraction so he decided to make his own subreddit to spread more discussion about the game. On the 5th of July, the 5th part of the game would be uploaded. This would be the final part of the gameplay. In the final part, the picture of Roman Pulaski appears and later on, as the player continues through the halls, they meet up with the little girl, for which the girl starts to chase the player. Finally, the video ends when the player reaches an empty room which appears to show that they're trapped. After this, you can imagine the audience was perplexed and speculating what part of it is real and what's not real. The people in the subreddit started to look into Jamie's reddit history and saw that he made claims about wanting to make his own horror game in the near future. So many people believed it must be some huge marketing stunt for a game he might release. Well, it all came crumbling down whenever a user on 4chan proved that the onion link he so claimed to get from the subscriber was actually a fake link. Whenever the user noticed the onion link Jamie put in the description had the number 9 in it, but this is strange since onion URLs only use the digits 2 to 7. After all the pressure building up against Jamie, he decided to remove all the descriptions from all the Sad Satan gameplays. To put the nail in the coffin, Kotaku, the journalist that interviewed Jamie, came out and stated that she didn't know whether Jamie was telling the truth with any of this, but she did mention that she approached him with a fake onion link accusation, and she mentioned that Jamie didn't want to put out the real link because the real one contained real gore and CP. Following that, Jamie stated, I didn't feel comfortable giving out a link for something like that. People are now believing that Jamie is just lying about everything and that he is most likely the one to have made the game. That this is just some huge internet mystery 
that he wanted to create until the absolute unthinkable happens which no one was expecting and this turned from being a funny little goose hunt to actually being a real crime. The game got leaked to the public. Now you're probably wondering, how did it get leaked? The original creator ZK comes out on 4chan and posts a mega link which leads to the game's download and now the game is released to the public. ZK also claims that what you've seen on YouTube isn't right. Don't believe that coward obscure horror corner. He did not show you what was truly in this game. Many people were still skeptical until many claimed that ZK ran the game with some safety software because shortly after people downloaded the game, their computers started to run slower and completely bricked entirely. This game was a virus. Many of the files on Jamie's version of the game weren't even there, it's almost as if they never existed. Most of the resources, texture packs, and audio files are not found in the real version. It's nothing like the one he played in the videos. Also, it was in one of the users directory, it's shown, see users Jamie documents, Terror Engine Reborn version 2.1 64-bit. Well, besides that, when the real game did launch up, it stated that the players met with real dead corpses and as many players played through the game, there is even more gore and actual CP flashed across the screen. Many people were tricked into playing this game and the game spread like wildfire and whoever has created the true version of this game was some sick freak because what was shown in this game was a literal crime. After this, many people really started to believe that ZK is actually Jamie and that he, when he was pushed into a corner, this made Jamie try to cover up with a story that he didn't create the game. Jamie even came out on a Reddit thread defending himself by stating, I know everyone thinks I made Sad Satan, but making a file containing CP and a virus is on a whole new level to that. The thing that makes me so angry about this is that my full name has been used by some people in videos about the game and some of the write-ups. I'm not just an anonymous YouTuber, now my reputation is being damaged by this clone. This leaves many questions unanswered, since a little after this, Jamie would disappear from the internet entirely and would stop posting on his YouTube channel and be inactive on any forum post. There are plenty of theories floating around who is actually behind this game and if ZK was even real in the first place or if this is just some ARG that everyone just got excited about. But whoever did make Sad Satan has to be some sick, sick bastard. But yeah, that's pretty much the story of Sad Satan. I don't really know what else to say, so I'm just going to take this time to plug my channel. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video. It really does mean the, the world to me. Consider subscribing if you guys do enjoy these types of videos. I'm going to be posting a lot more on here. Like always, I'm working, in, I'm working on other videos in the meantime. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, bye.